right, so you can see that. And they've all been set up so I can frame the edge, kind of like in the corner there like that, so I can find a piece and see which edge <coughs> hits the mark, so to speak. But you can see that each one's recording because it's square, not circular. I know it's a mess in here, I'm just trying to get this put together. <clears throat> and the one that's going to have the best audio is this one, because it's directly connected to the MacBook. So this basically gives, I mean, albeit a little bit expensive, I mean, the lowest I found previous generations was around $700 for 256 for an M1 iPad Pro. Even a pre-M1 was still a little expensive, but <clears throat> it's a fully working setup. You can see there's no extra cables anywhere. Let me back up. It's going right like this one here. It's a single HDMI. HDMI to USB-C, or so USB, and then there's a hub. <coughs> so that's all that's causing this to work. I just want to make sure you guys could see that this was legit. So I currently have three cameras going. The iPad Mini Pro, <coughs> sorry, the iPad Mini 6 does not work with this. But I can use uh, USB audio, I'm sorry, a USB HDMI input, a uh, USB HDMI capture card with it, if that makes any sense. Um, I tried having this on the Mac, but it was telling me HDCP was en enabled. I'm like, no, I don't have $500 for a decimator, sorry. But yeah, <clears throat> I found this out by accident because I remember seeing something on Apple uh, showing a demonstration of a USB camera coming in. And um, and I tried it out with my OBS Bot Mini 8, uh, 1080, and it worked. Also, a couple other USB webcams, and yeah, it's pretty intriguing how this developed. I just tried it one day after um, doing this, but it has to be iOS 17.3 or higher and I know it works with the pre M1 MacBook Pro I mean iPad uh, sorry I know it works with the pre M1 iPad Pro they're all 12 inches it almost looks like we've got three of them in a row there but <laughs> that's a 13 inch MacBook and that's my other my other one, that's the M2, that's the M1, and that's the pre-M1 right there. So you can see they all three work. But unfortunately, the iPad mini does not. But I can use it as my switcher. So now I have a YOLO box kind of thing. <laughs> Hopefully they don't get mad at me for saying their name. But, uh, yeah, having a nice battery brick. I use it all day and I haven't charged it yet. It's still working good. But yeah, here it is. The Aerocaster with the ability to bring in HDMI cameras. But the test is going to be in post to see if um, oops. to see if it um, has any lag issues between the cameras, which I have a weird feeling it's going to. I have a feeling it's going to be different between the iPhone and the HDMI um, UVCs. So, USB video capture, if you're wondering. Anyways, and they're cheap. I mean, that one there is, I think, 100 bucks. That one there is roughly. 20 bucks. I had another one that's just, it's a direct plug-in, not with a 
of cable. I like the cable ones better because they have more strain relief. I don't like having something plugged directly into a dock or that gets moved around where that is actually nice. <clears throat> and if you unplug it, it's USB-C. So if you have a USB-C dock, it works good. But the only downfall is you have to have everything powered. So right here I have power coming in, coming from this to keep this running. Ignore the battery because that's being charged. Um, and then there's an HDMI splitter. So this is pushing to here and then to here and then to here. So, but you can see a, a diff if, you, if I do this, let's see if I can get it to show here. You can see a little bit of lag when it comes to, man, hold on, most of the motion's at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, you can see maybe a second or two of, of uh, lag just through the phone. I'm mean, not through the phone, I'm sorry. Just from the HDMI adapter, so. And I don't know what this looks like here. <clears throat> so. But every one of these systems has a little bit of a lag between capture through the phones or the cameras to the stream just because timing. And I don't know if the Aerocaster does what the uh, Sling Studio did. So, all right, I'm gonna wrap this up and uh, give you my final thoughts. Thanks for watching. Aerocaster using professional grade cameras. It is possible. Thank you, iOS 17.3 plus. Now I don't have an iPhone 15 to see if this works with an iPhone 15. One of these days I'll have one and I will make a supplemental video if it works. If you do not see a video from me in the future, it didn't. That being said, it's an expensive add-on. Unless you already have the iPads like I did. I upgraded my pre-M1 iPad to an, MPad, to an iPad Pro M2. My wife had an M1. So it's easy for me to do this test. So I did not go out and buy these purposely for this. I already had these iPads. I already had the HDMI capture cards. I've been testing a few, trying to figure out different ways to bring compute stuff into my computer via OBS. And um, so I had those. I already had the camera gear because I've been doing this for a while. And, you know, you have your own gear after a while. And um, the thing I would like to clarify is there is a little bit of work that has to be done post. Now, in this video, you'll see that I did the clapping. That helped me sync all the clips up. Now, I do external recording, not inside, not just inside the system. I do that for a reason because I've never trusted any of the devices I've ever had to record properly because I've had audio glitches even in camera. So I've always had an exterior recording so there's that too and I was using um, the newer wireless lapel microphones with built-in recording capability and they did an amazing job with the audio unfortunately the two-hour seminar I didn't start recording till about 15 minutes in because I was doing so many things trying to get it to work with everything and I you know first time doing this in a live event with the uh, the Aerocaster bringing in a, a separate source, which I only had two at the time, which is the GH5 and the Ozbot, which the Ozbot failed me badly. It was a horrible image, and trying to switch on an iPad Mini, I would not recommend. You just cannot see what your sources look like, and the iPad Mini was not allowing me to have an external, external monitor. That being said, having those claps help you sync things up in post if things didn't go well out in the field. And the switch went okay. The audio sync was pretty good. Um, and then I did this test because I wanted to show two GH5s and bring a um, PowerPoint presentation style in, which is basically the, the AI music that you get to watch in the video. And everything went pretty well flawless, except the clip you saw where it went black for a second. You saw my side profile. Yes, I look great in my girdle. No, I have 
some back issues right now and I'm wearing a back brace. Um, so yeah, you did see me there. That was, that was a glitch that happened without me even knowing about it until the post. That's also the reason why it's good to have multiple cameras. So if you're doing this with a, you're trying to bring your DSLR in, make sure you have an iPhone as a backup. That way, if something glitches, you're good to go. So I'm going to test the hub and the HDMI adapter again to make sure it's that's just the problem. But in conclusion, this works. And I think it's only going to get better once Roland actually accepts it and shows other users that this works. Um, but again, it's expensive if you do not have it. So if you have, have the parts, give it a shot, especially if you have an Aerocaster. And uh, leave me some comments. Thanks for watching.